it's time for you to experience the blessing. At this time, know that the love of God is abounding in your life. Believe that God loves you and you will see things begin to happen in your life. Your offerings, they come before him as a sweet smelling aroma. Believe that. Your confession is affecting your environment. Believe that. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Enjoy. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Pastor Kenny Mukwena. I am Pastor Tepile Mukwena. And it's time for you to experience the blessing. We are continuing with our message, faith activation. We are focusing on the love aspect because love is so important. So the love we're talking about right now is the love that God has for us. When you believe that God loves you, your faith is going to work. That is what Galatians 5 verse 6 tells us. In the Amplified Classic Edition, it says that if you are placed in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything, but faith which is activated, energized, and expressed, and working through love. So at this time, know that the love of God is abounding in your life. Believe that God loves you, and you will see things begin to happen in your life. Man, in the book of John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten mm. son. You know, that's how much God loves you. Yes. You cannot doubt that. Mm. He sacrificed for you and me so that we can experience all the fullness mm. in God's kingdom. Mm. Amen. Amen. So let us go straight into the message. We will come back, say a few words, and then pray for you. God bless you as you listen to the message. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I, man, are you enjoying the messages that I've been preaching on putting on the missing pieces? Man, God is taking us to a higher level. So we are continuing with our message, faith activation. Say faith activation. Faith activation. We are focusing on the love aspect now. Hallelujah. Love is a main feature, main feature in your walk of faith. Hallelujah. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to let a lot of scriptures talk to you today. Hallelujah. So I'm going to let the word talk today. Hallelujah. Are you okay? Father, we just want to thank you so much, even for this day, Lord God, that you have set aside for us to sit under the ministry of your word. I thank you, Lord God, that your word carries power to deliver, to heal, to set free, to make whole. Thank you for the grace to rightly divide the word of truth. I thank you, Lord God, for eyes that see and ears that hear, a heart that perceive in the name of Jesus Christ. I give you the praise, Lord God, this morning in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our main text has been Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to 18, which reads as follows. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having gathered your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And verse 16, which is what we are focusing on, above all, Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Hallelujah. We are talking about faith activation. In this message, I'm encouraging you to get your faith to work. Hallelujah. I'm encouraging you to plug your faith in and get it Working, hallelujah, because we are living at a time right now, as I've always been saying, where believers need to be strong in the Lord. That's why the Apostle Paul says, be strong in the Lord, be strong in the Lord. And I've been saying to you that to be strong in the Lord, it takes a revelation of Christ Jesus in your heart. You cannot be strong in the God you do not know. This is the time for us to seek God in our lives like never before. Let me tell you something, for those that are pricing the things of God so highly, and fellowshipping with God in his word, setting time aside, showing him that he met us in their lives. The Bible says in, in Isaiah uh, 26 verse 3, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed in him. He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed in him. David says that I have set the Lord 
always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall never be shaken. He says, I have set the Lord. I, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall never be shaken. Let me tell you something. When you spend time in the presence of the Lord, he strengthens you. There is something that he imparts into your spirit. Your life never remains the same again. He gives you understanding of things which you will not understand in your natural ability. He gives you the assurance of his love. You experience something so tangible and something so real. And he shares secrets with you. Hallelujah. I explained to you many times, especially with the scripture that we've been using, uh, Matthew chapter 17, where a boy brought in the paralytic. He could not heal that paralytic. They, they, no, they, 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 the father brought the paralytic to the disciples. The disciples, they could not heal him. The Bible says that when the disciples were in private with Jesus, they asked him, why couldn't we heal the, 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 the demon? Why? In private. In private. Same thing when he teaches the parables. You will see them after the multitudes have departed and then going into private place and asking the Lord, what does the parable mean? You understand? And then he explains to them, there are certain things which God is only going to impart and reveal to you when you are one-on-one -on -one with him. Many people have got a public relationship with the Lord. They don't have a private relationship with him. Let me tell you something. You cannot put your faith in a pastor at this time. You cannot. You cannot put your faith in a pastor this time. You need to put your faith in God. When you can't get hold of the pastor, you need to have a direct line to God where you talk to God yourself and allow him to impart to you. Hallelujah. When that veil was torn, it was, it was a new dispensation being ushered in to say the dispensation of priests is over now. We have a high priest who is Jesus Christ who intercedes for us. All you need to do is to call upon his name. When you call upon his name, he will hear you. Hallelujah. Remember that. That there are certain things which you will never experience until you learn to exercise yourself when it comes to the things of God in private with him and have fellowship with him, commune with him, and talk to him, and he talks to you back. Hallelujah. That is why when you pray, don't be satisfied about just going into, the, into your prayer closet, and then you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, and, and, then you, and then you say amen, and then you leave. No. Hang around the presence of God. Because he wants, he has something to say to you that is more powerful than what you have been saying to him. The words that matters are not the words that you say to him, but it's the words that he says back to you. Hallelujah. There is so much power in that. It's impartation. He imparts himself into your spirit. What God reveals to you, let me tell you, it's also, a, we are living at an, at an era of deception now. That's why Jesus talked about that, that in the last days, many are going to be deceived. There will be so many doctrines, so many teachings. You know, there's going to be so many things happening. If you can't fellowship with the Lord yourself and have a private relationship with him, when other people are struggling, you will struggle with them. And I've been telling you this, even if God displays his power in your life, you will be a believer who moves from one experience with God to another, but after every experience, you wonder whether that God is going to give you another experience. Why? Because you don't have a tangible relationship with him that affects your inner man. Your inner man has to be affected. Has to be affected. God has to strengthen you inside. That is why when you read, I think it's, it's, it's Ephesians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul says, he prays, he says, I pray to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he will grant you according to the riches of his story, of his glory, that you be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened, to be made strong in your inner man. When the Apostle Paul says, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. He says, first let it affect you inside. And then you rely on his power. When you know that you know that you know that God is at work, it's easy for you when you see things happening to believe that they will not affect you. And many things are going to happen. Trust me, you will see it, but it will not affect you. Say it will not affect me. Because God causes everything to work for the good of his people. Say it's working. Let me tell you, the power of God is working. Your prayers are reaching heaven. Believe that. Your offerings, they come before him as a sweet smelling aroma. Believe that. Your confession is affecting your environment. Believe that. That the word that you speak, you will experience it. Believe that as a believer. You need that right now in your daily walk with God. Because let me tell you, when they announce a recession in South Africa, they announce it to all South Africans. But what will make the distinction is what you know. What you know. 
What you know. There is some inside information that is only available for believers. That is why in January during prayer, I'm going to be teaching you about God's economic system so that you can learn to depend. What we need right now is to learn to depend. First Peter 5, 6, it says, humble yourself. How? Humility in the things of God is to depend. Humility is you saying, Lord, in my own ability, in my own strength, in my connections, I cannot make it. Humility in the things of God is to depend. So in, in 1 Peter 5 verse 6 says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in the time that is to come. And then it says in verse 7, Casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. How do you humble yourself? By depending. How do you depend? By casting your cares upon him because he cares for you. You need to learn to do that as a believer. You need to learn to depend. At the hour like this, you cannot depend on yourself because money answers all things, but money will fail. Trust me. Money is not, look, it's actually not money you are looking for. What you're looking for is what money can do for you. So that is why I'm teaching you about faith, to teach you to depend on God. And the message you are dealing with right now, faith activation, the love aspect, this is the foundation, the key, the core. You miss this message. You miss this message that I'm preaching now. All the other messages that I, that I, that I preach, they're not going to go, they're not going to assist you. The love aspect is key. And I want to show you today with scripture. I said the love aspect is key. Remember, we're dealing with, with Ephesians um, 6 verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all. To quench all. This is the hour and the season where the shield of faith is required like never before. That you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. All the flaming missiles of the wicked one. This is the hour that we need that. The shield of faith. He says it's only with the shield of faith that you will be able to quench all. I like that because he says all, not some. And I believe this. I believe this with all my heart because, you know, when you talk about faith, you are talking about relying on the promises of God that we know that in Christ they are yes and they are amen. The Bible says his faithful promises, they are our armor and our protection. Hallelujah. The promises of God. The promises of God. It is through the promises of God that we partake. We become partakers of God's supernaturality, his divine nature. Are you understanding me, church? It is so important right now that you'll be found in your faith that it doesn't matter what happened you believe that you believe that even this challenge that i'm going through right now it is but a light affliction hallelujah but it is god is you is, is causing it to work together for my good because he causes everything to work for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose say it's working this morning it's working you must believe that the way that i preach to you is working the word that I declare to you, it's working. Hallelujah. Believe that with all your heart. That your Christianity is working. You are the righteousness of God and it's working. Hallelujah. Even if, even if evidence does not suggest like that, believe. The things of God require that you believe. Hallelujah. We walk by faith, not by sight. Believe and expect, and expect the power of God to spring up at any moment. Hallelujah. So we're looking at Galatians 5 verse 6. In the Amplified Classic Edition, Galatians 5, verse 6. One of the scriptures that I like in the Bible very much because, I mean, if you understand this scripture, it changes everything about how you see faith. You know, when I launched this message, I talked about, I, I talk about two kinds of faith. Faith for being and faith for getting. Many people only embrace faith for getting. They only talk about faith when they have to receive something. No, there is faith for being. Knowing I am a child of God. Knowing I am the righteousness of God. And everything flowing from that is faith for being. When the Bible says the just shall live by faith, it's faith for being. It's not faith that you must pack it sometimes and then pick it up sometimes when there is something you're looking for or there is a challenge you want to solve. No, I told you that as a believer, you are a working solution. A problem must find you with a solution already because the just shall live by faith. Faith is a solution to every problem. And when you are ready with faith, when the problem comes, it cannot touch you. Why? Why? The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. That is faith for being. And that's the kind of faith I am preaching. I'm not preaching faith for getting. Let me tell you, the moment you embrace faith for being and know who you are in Christ, the faith 
forgetting. You don't even have to exercise it. That is why when you read Matthew 6, 33, it says, and all these things shall be added. It shall be added. When you embrace and walk in your, in, 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 in your nature as a child of God, things get added to you. They are a part of you. Why? Because the one who owns everything lives in you. That is the mystery of Christianity. Hallelujah. It's a big thing to be called the righteousness of God. It's a big deal, I tell you, to be called a child of God. It's a huge, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. I wish you understand that. It's a big, it's a big deal. When you are called a child of God. I attended a funeral. My, 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 my father-in-law, Babalom Nganwa, my wife, um, some, I think last month or so. And the man was preaching there. Preached something so powerful. He was talking about John 1 verse 12. As many as received him to them, he gave the right to become a child of God or to become children of God. And he, and, and he stayed making a, a, explaining the distinction between a child of God and those that are not children of God. And he gives an analogy. He says, as a, par a parent, imagine you are at home. You hear a sound of someone crying in the street at midnight. You hear a sound. You can't recognize who's crying in the street. The first thing that happens is an annoyance in you. Why is this person crying at midnight, you know, making noise? What is he doing even in the street? But then, turn that around. That to a voice that you understand. Your child is crying in the street at midnight. Many will forget that you slept undressed. When it's your child crying out there, it calls for your immediate attention. You don't ask questions. You arise, you want to see what is happening to your child. You will ask questions about why, what were you doing? I mean, if as a parent, your child is crying on the street, and the first thing you think about is, what is my, children, my child doing in the street? No, a parent doesn't think about that. Why? Because this is my child. Hallelujah. Church, I tell you, it's a big thing for you to be called a child of God. It's a big thing for you to be the righteousness of God. God cares about you. When you are going through something, God cares about you. But he has established that how you access him on this earth is through your faith. Do you know that when Peter, when Peter was walking on the water, if Peter did not cry out to Jesus, I, I'm glad he cried out because that would, not, that would not have been a nice picture. He wants... That was place for us to learn from it. The Bible says when he began to sink, he cried out. He cried out. Do you think Jesus was not aware that he was about to sink? Did he jump to grab him? Did he love him? Didn't he love him? He loves him. Let me tell you, that is place there for our learning. For us to know that when you go through something, cry out to the Lord. Cry out and say, Daddy, my God, hallelujah, my Father, he will hear you and he will pick you up. I hope this message has blessed you, has refreshed you, has activated the love of God in your spirit. You see, see God as a big God. See God as a loving God because God does not have love. God is love. So before we close this broadcast today, I just want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Make this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me on the cross. Today, I give you my life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Amen and amen. If you made that prayer, you are born again. We will see you in heaven one day. So thank you so much for tuning in to this broadcast today. I know for a fact that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. You know, get in touch with us. The information is on the screen. We would love to hear from you. And also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's a lot of material that we have put in there for your nourishment. So God bless you. See you again next time. Do you know how much God loves you? That is what is key. Do you know that you are a new creation? A new creation now, it means that your nature is that of God. Your nature, you take the nature of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Understand God from that perspective. The Bible does not say that God has love. No, God is love. Then it means that if Christ be in us, if we are in Christ, our nature is love. Everything that we do must flow from love. Whatever we, whether we serve, whether we give, 
whether we win souls, whether we sing in the choir, it doesn't matter whether we pray, whether we prophesy, everything that we do must flow from the generosity of God towards us. The generosity of men must always flow from the generosity of God. You will never understand love until you understand God as love, not as having love. Because something you have, you can separate yourself from it. Hallelujah. I have my, I, my, my map book here, but I can be separated from, the, from it. Hallelujah. But something that is you, how can you separate God from God? How can you separate God from God? You cannot. That's who he is. That is why under the new dispensation, God had to give us his son for us to demonstrate his love. It was an act of love. It was a demonstration of love. That is why John 3, 16 is a, it's a, it's a popular scripture even to those who do not believe. You ask them, which scripture do you know in the Bible? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God demonstrating his love towards men. Hallelujah. We need to understand that. So when we talk about, when we talk about faith, faith, it will never work if you don't know that God loves you. It will never work. I'm talking about the right working that God has designated it for to, to be. You may still get results on this earth, but what will it profit a man to gain the whole world but loses his soul? What will it profit you to walk by faith and we, 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 we even say to you, you are a man of faith. You are a son and a daughter of encouragement, but before God, you are nothing because your earth is not flowing from a cup. There is another motive. There are many people that, there are many things that people do. But always, forget about them. Think about yourself. Think about yourself. Even if you as a person are falling short. Even if you as a person has not prayed for a week. Even if you as a person feel short in every area of your life. You have seen, you have done all sorts of things. But if you can understand the love of God. The love that God has for people. And who stand in front of the person and say, as the righteousness of God, I declare right now that you are healed. And relying on the love, independent of yourself, that God has for that person, there will be a distinction at that moment. Hallelujah. Catch us on One Gospel DSTV channel 331 every Sunday at 12. And every Tuesday at 10 a.m. See, See you there. there. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. From my family to you and your family, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Enjoy! Enjoy.